while ago, I did a video on JK Armaments solvent traps. They made two versions. Basically, they made a rifle version, and they also made, in like this case, a pistol version. This is what I use on a lot of my nine millimeter uh, PCCs, pistol caliber carbines, uh, and pistols as well. Now, I said they made a rifle solvent trap as well, and what they have now also created is a short barrel rifle solvent trap. And I'm gonna explain to you what that difference is. So a couple things. Uh, I was saying earlier that the uh, that JK started off with a rifle solvent trap and a pistol solvent trap. Well, one of the things to understand is that a lot of people now have been buying PCCs, and PCCs can be chambered in nine mil to ten mil to three hundred blackout, and also five point five six. And what happens is when that barrel gets shorter, there's more violence that starts to happen to that 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 uh, solvent trap. So with that, this is a titanium solvent trap, okay? This is designed to take the abuse uh, that a short barrel rifle will basically put out. Now, it has the fork on there, but the fork can be taken off, and you can also run a uh, strainer as well. It's really interesting looking at the long range community because a lot of a lot of the new things that I'm starting to see is where guys are running suppressors and then at the very end to give themselves a little bit of an advantage uh, because they're not really worried about signature and a lot of the signatures being reduced within the um, within the can itself um, is running a break on it. So they'll run a break on the very end just to kind of tame that down. Because if you're familiar with running suppressors, then you know there's a, um, a different impulse that kind of takes place when running a can. So this will let out, this strainer will let out a little bit of back pressure to kind of negate that. So something really cool that JK has done. And remember, uh, what, is, what is your responsibility? Well, your responsibility is to get a solvent trap and then do the form one on it, which usually takes way less time than form two in. And then of course, as soon as you get your form one back, then you can do what you need to do in order to make everything legal at that point. So a couple really nice new things that are coming out, out on the market by JK. Not only does the fork right here and the strainer work on all the solvent traps, but they also work on what we call the smokestack. This is the smokestack right here. There's no baffle in it. And what's nice about it is if you need a little bit more barrel length added onto your gun really quickly, you can put this on and it still works really effectively as a brake. However, if you want to reduce that signature because you're doing some vehicle stuff or you're working in close proximity with others, then the fork would probably be that better bet to go with. <clears throat> the combination is just taking the stack and either changing out the strainer and or the fork. But again, yet another option for you. So when you're running a, uh, in this case, a six inch barrel gun and you're trying to shoulder it, there's not a lot of room for your hand. And that's where I really think the stack shines is that it gives you that little bit of barrel length if you need it. And of course, if you don't, you can just simply take it off, okay? Having that little bit of flexibility, adding some barrel length and or taming this is important. Like we talked about earlier with the fork, to have the uh, fork installed instead of the stack uh, or on the stack instead of the strainer, I think is really important. <clears throat> I like also that you, kind of like Burger King, you get to choose how many baffles you want. So I think typically it comes with uh, eight 
and uh, after you get your form one back and you can you you can drill them and then at that point you can play around with this in the beginning and try to figure out hey what works best for me are you trying to keep this small and compact or are you trying to really reduce the signature for me on this 300 block out I found that there was a difference between four and adding that uh, next one in there I think kind of tamed it down at least to my ear just a little bit so a lot of a lot of um, uh, old products still that JK are doing that's that are just phenomenal and a lot of new ones uh, that I really like and have really enjoyed this this last uh, batch that have kind of come out and are about to hit the market let's talk about the war eagle the war eagle is a flash hider and muzzle brake so it's a hybrid is it the best muzzle brake no is it the best flash hider no it's not is it a good combination of the two absolutely one of the things that you'll notice right away is where the flats are in the back. So I can put a wrench right in here. However, sometimes when guys, depending upon what type of gear you're trying to interface and what you're trying to do and achieve, <clears throat> when you're trying to wrench this really close to a rail, you can't get the wrench in there. So then what do you do? Of course, they thought about that too. So this right in here are more flats that you can put your wrench on. And I think that's super awesome so you can get basically this as close to uh, to the rail as possible and just utilizing the flats if that's what you need to. Or if you have another issue, you can break the two apart. So it just gives you a little bit of flexibility. The other thing is it just simply screws in. So with the stack and the strainer, it just screws right on, locks, and then you're done. A couple things. Whenever I look for a suppressor, I look for repeatability in, in my zero not shifting much. Now we know that any time that that round is in the, in the suppressor, we've given it more barrel length. So typically if I were to zero at 50 yards unsuppressed, and that's what my zero is, when I add the can, the bullet's still in the can, and generally I print about an inch low, maybe a half inch low, it might not be that much. What I don't want is I don't want it being two inches low and left. There's no predictability within that. I still want it centered up. And they've done a great job making sure that when that gets aligned, those are very close. Backwards compatibility is very important. And when you're dealing with um, a lot of us in the industry, we've already made purchases on uh, muzzle devices from other manufacturers. To be able to take something like this and know that you have about 12 manufacturers that their, um, uh, their gear, their products will interface with this system is awesome. Uh, this, as an example, is a three lug and I use it primarily on a lot of my nine mil PCCs. However, this is the back portion from Liberty and, and what you would do is you would take this off and you would put this on. So either you want a direct thread to your PCC or because you're running a pistol and you're not gonna run a three lug on it, it would be a little weird, you would just switch this out. And that's what I like about the versatility. Now, one of the other systems that I've really begun to fancy is this system right here. And when you look at it, it's a quick unlock and it's off. And that's what we're gonna talk about here. So again, this goes to show just a versatility between companies. We have a Silencer Co. Uh, Bravo booster with a Griffin cam lock piston. And what you're looking at here is basically, in a nutshell, a really small three lug. So I just put it on, turn left, and it's done. <clears throat> so a lot of times, uh, I'll come over to this barn. And because sometimes we'll end up getting um, some small game in here, I don't not come in here without a pistol in my hand. The problem is I'm walking through the yard with this because I've got nowhere to put it. Um, as you can see, it's pretty big. 
And I really like this application. I like what they've done here. And the reason why is now I can carry this in a normal holster. I can carry this in my jacket pocket. And instead of sitting there just threading it on, I just simply line this up, rotate, and my suppressor's on. When I'm done, I unlock, and then I put this away. I think this is a really good system. I think for uh, special operations, uh, I think for law enforcement, dependent upon the application of what they're doing, especially if they're doing something where they may have to go into a meth lab really quickly. I think for civilian use, different types of civilian use, that obviously makes sense. Uh, this system is really cool. And again, that's one of the things that I like that JK Armament's doing with their forward thinking is making sure that all these other great companies that are in our industry, everything can interface and work together instead of just a, you have to, you have to buy this one thing and that's all. So to have that flexibility, I think is outstanding.